Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to VMware SASE, uh, getting started with SD-WAN. This is our expert-led workshop. Uh, my name is Aaron Ramirez. Uh, we're going to start off real quick. Uh, I'm going to do some introductions uh, to the team here, uh, who's to my left. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the SD-WAN solution overview. Uh, kind of give you a little information about the lab architecture, how we built the lab this year, and then we'll jump right into lab time. So again, if you've started the lab, it's fine. Um, we should have enough time to get through it, uh, but if uh, you have any issues, let us know. Um, and again, uh, during this presentation, at any point, please raise your hand. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. So with me today, uh, Frank. Hey, good morning, everyone. I am Frank Snyder. I'm a staff cloud solutions engineer with the network and security business unit uh, focused on VMware's global financial accounts. Um, I've been with VMware eight and a half years, uh, and this is my sixth year as an HOL lab captain, fourth year actually working on the SASE slash SD-WAN labs. Um, and you know, my spare time, uh, you know, I'm an amateur bowler, I go sailing and uh, you know, a few other things, uh, but I'll go ahead and hand it off to Aaron. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Aaron Ramirez. I'm out of Seattle, Washington. I cover uh, VMware's global accounts. Um, been with VMware nine years now. Uh, this is my fifth year working in HOL. Uh, started with the NSX labs and uh, been working on the SD-WAN and, and SASE labs for the last three years. Uh, some of my hobbies, love being outdoors, hiking, snowboarding, uh, all that fun stuff. And uh, next, uh, we have Ron. Hello, everybody. I am very happy to be here. My name is Ron Wiley. I'm a technical account manager with VMware. I've been in VMware for about four wonderful years. This is my very first year on the HOL team as a HOL captain. As far as my hobbies, as you can see, I love exercise. I love cooking and all things grilling, all right? Smoking meats, grilling meats, anything associated with meats, that's me. Uh, with that being said, I look forward to you all having a wonderful, wonderful experience with our Sassy Labs. It's a lot of good content, so just take it in, guys. It's really good stuff. And thank you all for contributing and joining. I'm going to pass it over to my guy, Laszlo. Yeah, we want to extend a special thank you to our technical enablement team. Uh, with us today, we have Laszlo. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Laszlo. I'm a senior technical enablement specialist. This is going to be my third year at VMware in, in September. Uh, my job is when one of our partners wants to launch a managed SD-WAN service, I enable the partners either virtual or from site to make sure that you're comfortable with having a new service offering. As you can see on the slide, my hobbies include outdoors and traveling. And when I'm not outdoors, indoors you usually find me in my garage around my drum kit. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. And we also want to uh, uh, extend a thank you to our uh, other uh, I should say, Laszlo's teammate, uh, Attila. Uh, he's not here with us today, but he uh, definitely helps, uh, he and Laszlo help us uh, make this lab possible. All right, so like I mentioned, we'll quickly go through an SD-WAN solution overview. I don't want to spend too much time and take away from the labs, but uh, you know, you look at traditional uh, SD-WAN deployments, um, especially uh, you know, traditional data center architectures. Uh, you'll see here you have you know, your core data center where all your on-premise applications will run. Uh, then you'd have users coming in from a VPN or branch offices over a dedicated, you know, like MPLS uh, network to get to that uh, those same data center services. And then you also have the tie-in of software services that may be run outside of your on-premise data center. Um, that's kind of the, you know, back in like I'd say the early 2000s. As you look at architectures today, it's a lot more complicated. You have a lot more endpoints spread out across the world, across your architecture for wide area network access, and now you have branch users and everyone accessing not only VPN into your core data center, uh, but you have applications now directly accessing in hybrid cloud architectures. Um, you might be running your, your applications on-premise, you might be running in a public cloud in an offering like VMC on AWS or a, maybe one of the other VMware clouds. Um, and now you have your users and endpoints also accessing those same services and applications. So how do you manage those environments? How do you secure and lock down uh, you know, access, but also control the communication and efficiently use those wide area and internet uh, services that you're provided to these remote locations outside of your core data center or cloud environment? This is where VMware's SASE and SD-WAN solutions come in. Um, and provide kind of a unified architecture. You can see here we have four main components. Our SD-WAN, which we'll be covering in this lab today, 244001. Uh, you have secure access and cloud web security. That is our lab 2441-01. 
Uh, that is focused on our cloud web security capabilities. Uh, and it all ties together in our VMware SASE portfolio. And now you're looking at any location, any user, any device really accessing, be it on-prem or cloud, your application and data center services. And again, we want to provide kind of efficient and um, you know, secured communication between your endpoints and any of those applications and services using our edge device. And I'll talk about what the edge device is, but you see here we also have a gateway uh, edge devices that are used to tie in data center and application services, but also stitch together a fabric via a gateway uh, in our orchestrator we use to uh, program all of this, which this is the perfect slide to kind of tell you what we're going to be doing today. So we'll be using our orchestrator, uh, which is a virtual machine appliance, uh, to administer both of our uh, edges, which is the focus of the intro lab 2440.01, in 24402, which is a secondary lab that we have for partner managed services, you'll be configuring and deploying our cloud gateways. So today we'll be focusing on using and configuring, or deploying I should say, a uh, edge from a, a remote site or a branch site. And in the module seven, we'll actually cover dynamic multipath optimization. We're not going to get through all the modules today in this lab. Uh, workshop, but we will try and get through as much as we can uh, to kind of demonstrate the capabilities of the edge and as well as management of the um, remote branch sites. So a little bit about the lab architecture. Every year we're trying to optimize and speed up the deployment. These VPods are self-contained, uh, but we also have to be, you know, uh, aware of the cost of running a larger uh, virtual pod inside of our uh, cloud environments. So this year we actually were able to slim down to about 45 VMs, running with about 50 vCPU and roughly 300 gigs of storage consumed and 55 gigs of RAM. Uh, we have upgraded to vSphere 8.0 to run all of our hypervisors. So these are snapshot from our vSphere client to show kind of what the uh, deployment architecture looks like. Uh, we don't have the orchestrator presented inside of what we call the nested environment. It sits at a layer one level. That improves performance, which is a, a huge impact from last year. We saw performance issues with the SD-WAN orchestrator sitting inside the layer two VMs. So we've moved it up into the layer one to provide that performance boost. Uh, you'll see here also we have SD-WAN gateways, which are down here, our VCGs. Uh, and then our SD-WAN edges. You'll see each of these remote sites, and I have a diagram that's coming up next, but uh, you'll see here Chicago, Dallas, our data center environment, LAX, uh, Miami, New York, SFO. Each of these sites have a virtual edge uh, appliance that runs, as well as uh, some clients and NetM, our network emulators as well, to kind of, in, kind of demonstrate latency and jitter across a WAN interface. Uh, we use Viata routers. Uh, this is to simulate an internet core, if you will. And then we also use them for our MPLS uh, simulated core as well, and I'll show you what that architecture looks like. Um, but we've also reduced, as I mentioned, by slimming down our lab, we've reduced our lab startup time from 20, 25 minutes last year to about eight minutes. So we're improving performance, we're improving deployment. Uh, so this actually speeds up, so after Explorer, when you take this lab, you're not waiting forever uh, for a lab to kind of spin up for you. So uh, it makes it uh, much better for kind of you know, using uh, on your own outside of the Explorer environment. Uh, single VPod, this is a single VPod that provides the same uh, use case and deployment for 24401 and 24402. Those are both the, you know, the intro to SD-WAN, which we're doing today, and then the partner managed services, which is 24402. Our 2441 lab, I just want to call it out. We've actually slimmed it down even lower. There's only about, I think, four or five virtual machines running inside that environment. So this spin up time is wicked fast. It's uh, closer to like almost three to five minutes, which is great. So this is the lab architecture the topology I kind of explained uh, you know, a minute ago, but you'll see here, I'll start off here on the right hand side. We have our orchestrator virtual machine, which you'll be using to log into to then administer all of the edge and uh, remote sites. So uh, here we have our Chicago branch. Um, this is a virtual edge with two different VLANs. We have VLAN one, and then we'll be configuring the secondary VLAN, VLAN two, to simulate two different clients talking uh, on two different interfaces to the, directly connected to this edge. Uh, and then we have this edge with two internet uh, connected links to our simulated internet cloud. Those are the Viata routers I mentioned before. 
We have, uh, and also this is meant to demonstrate kind of a practical customer deployment and different use cases or different, uh, I should say, wide area network architectures, but New York here, you can see here, is different from Chicago. We have a single edge deployed here with a Viata router, which is directly connected to the MPLS. The edge is connected directly to the internet. And we'll show you how to secure uh, that network traffic going across uh, a wide open internet. Um, we have a data center environment kind of uh, you know, deployed here. Two different uh, data center servers connected to a virtual switch. We have two edges to show redundancy and high availability. Uh, we have data center one, or edge one and two, both connected to the internet. And then we have a Viata router with a dedicated MPLS wide area network link. San Francisco, a different use case here, but very similar to what we have at you know, New York and in the data center, but we have a Viata router with a switch directly connected to a client and an edge connected to the internet. LAX, we'll assume maybe as a small branch office, for instance. In these deployments, we may only have one edge, uh, and that edge may only have one link and directly connected to the internet. Dallas may be like a medium-sized office where we have not only an internet link connected to our edge, but also an MPLS network. So we want to differentiate how we efficiently use, and again, I'll kind of talked about the dynamic multi-path optimization, how we use those available links to, to pass traffic between a, a, a branch office edge device. And then to kind of simulate how we can actually optimize traffic for dedicated uh, uh, non-edge enabled or SD-WAN enabled sites. We have Miami router here. Uh, it's a Viata router correct, directly connected to the MPLS uh, uh, route at core as well. Um, again, feel free to stop me if there's any questions. Today in the lab, um, there are there is an intro lab, our intro module one. Uh, there's seven modules in this lab, but intro module one, we're going to skip over that in the lab, and I'm going to start directly with uh, zero touch provisioning of an edge device. We're going to deploy uh, the Chicago edge. Um, this part of the lab will be will be just configuring the edge, but uh, as a part of the zero touch provisioning, we'll actually have uh, a simulated uh, click-through, if you will, demonstration of deploying an edge, a virtual edge remotely. Uh, then we'll be configuring overlays and uh, configuring the edge profiles before applying a business policy uh, to restrict or redirect certain levels of traffic. Uh, the last two labs, time permitting, there is a cloud VPN and DPMO. Uh, if you're able to go through those labs, please, uh, you know, please do and ask any questions. Uh, Laszlo, uh, Ron, and Frank, myself, are all here to answer any of your questions as you kind of go through those labs. And now, lab time. So I will let you all start your labs. And while we're doing that, I'm going to uh, hopefully switch over to my lab. All right, perfect. Let me go here. All right. Does anyone have any issues uh, accessing their lab? Uh, please let us know, just raise your hand. All right, so uh, one thing that Frank just called out to me, um, we did have, we did find a little bit of a bug in our lab. I'm going to walk you through some steps that are not documented in the manual today, uh, but we will be updating the manual uh, here shortly after this, uh, this conference, and uh, it'll include these steps if we aren't able to patch. But uh, if you're going to follow along, um, I'm going to go to the table of contents, and I'm going to skip ahead to uh, module two, and you'll see here we have an introduction. So this is going to be the introduction to the zero touch provisioning of a branch uh, device. So as I mentioned here on, on page 47 of this uh, manual, you'll see the diagram for the lab. So this is a quick and easy reference for us to kind of click back through and make sure, okay, who am I connecting to and what IP address um, and where, what is connected to what. Uh, so for the uh, branch activation, there are a few steps here uh, there's, you know, that are going to mention you know, provisioning and activation. Uh, we're going to go through both of those steps in configuring this. So uh, I'll try and go as slow as I can. 
But if there are any questions, and if I'm going too fast, uh, please just raise your hand or you let me know, you know, slow down. So to start off, we're going to open up the Firefox web browser. And it should automatically take you to the orchestrator UI. Uh, if you do not go directly to the orchestrator UI, there is a bookmark here for SD-WAN orchestrator. Go ahead and click that, and uh, it'll take you right to where we need to be today. Uh, so we have pre-filled out uh, user authentication um, information. We'll select the admin at globalretail.net. This is assuming I am an administrator for this um, company, this global retail company, and I'm going to log into the orchestrator using those credentials. Uh, if you had any questions, the password is, or any questions about the user authentication, the username is admin uh, at re globalretail.net. The password is capital V, capital M, and lowercase w-a-r-e, number one, bang, our exclamation point. So step one, uh, deploy the edge. So we're going to go to step 54. In the lab manual, step 54, we're going to click on configure. We'll click on edges. It should already be selected, but just in case. And we're going to add an edge. Click add edge. Slide 55 provides us the information we need to fill in. So chi-vce-01 is the name of our edge. The model is going to be a virtual edge. Profile, uh, we're going to select Quick Start Profile to begin with, and I'll kind of talk a little bit later about what that profile, that edge profile is, and how it applies. And then the edge license, there only should be one available, and that's the premium one gig activation. Scrolling down, uh, we're going to click Next, leave everything else default, uh, certificate, certificate deactivated, uh, local contact name and contact email, uh, we'll leave those default. Click Next. Uh, and this, in, this uh, step actually allows us to enter a serial number. So in the event that you're going to deploy an edge to a branch office and you already have it maybe on site in hand, and you know that serial number, you can pop that in there. Um, also you can add a custom description and add a location to set a location or you can leave it to auto detect and it should determine where it is uh, that it's deployed. So I'll go ahead and click add edge. And a couple of things I want to note here. So, this edge has been provisioned with activation key uh, up here in the top warning label. Um, if I go to overview, which is actually, I believe, our next step, um, we will see that it has not been activated yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to click send activation email. Something to keep in mind is that this is a nested lab environment, so we don't have uh, the ability to email. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to send activation email, but we're only going to copy the activation email link. Uh, so right here, you scroll down. I'm actually skipping ahead here a little bit too fast. But you should be able to scroll down and then right click and copy that link. Um, alternatively, in the lab manual, we have you highlight it and then click copy link. Um, either way is fine. And then we're going to click cancel. We're not actually going to send the activation email. Again, due to the nature of this lab, uh, we don't have that ability, so we're just going to click Cancel. And then next, we're going to activate that branch uh, edge that we just deployed. So we're going to minimize this Firefox browser. And on the desktop of our main console, again, this is a Linux main console, we have a uh, shortcut to our Chicago Client 01. Uh, so we're going to log into this client via an admin uh, interface. And then from there, this RDP session, we're going to activate our edge via a uh, web browser call, that link that we just copied. So after it comes up, I'll notice that I have the ability to click inside of here. This is a Windows desktop. Um, this RDP session, we're going to go ahead and click uh, Chrome. Come on. I noticed yesterday that our lab did move a bit sluggish. Um, could be just a little bit of a constraint inside the environment, but uh, our performance constraints, but uh, we're hoping, hoping this doesn't take too much longer to start up. I'm going to actually close up. Oh, there it is, attempting reconnection. We'll give it a second.
All right. So I opened up the Chrome browser and I'm gonna right click and say paste and go. So that link, that activation link that we copied, we're gonna click paste and go. It's gonna go through activation steps, but it's gonna give me a warning that uh, it, wasn't able, it was not able to authenticate the certificate. So we're gonna drop down advance, we're gonna ignore cert certificate errors, and we'll click activate again. What we expect to see and what you should see is this edge is now activated in this warning or this uh, alert. Excuse me, sorry about that. It does take a little bit of time. Uh, again, this is a nested lab, so it takes just a little bit of time for it to kind of call back to the edge. But now we see that the edge is now activated. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll minimize, or I should say close that out. We'll close out this uh, Chrome browser. I'm going to minimize the uh, Chicago client um, RDP session and open back up the micro, or the Firefox uh, browser. And so in the we're now going to monitor and see that this edge has been activated. Uh, to do so, we'll go to monitor. We'll go to edges. And we now see that the edge uh, is in a degraded state. It does take a minute or two. Um, we do kind of call this out, but it, it should go from degraded to connected here shortly. Uh, one other thing I did want to call out is that sometimes you'll see these edges uh, drop out into a degraded state. Uh, so you see here our DC uh, edge, DC one edge is actually in a degraded state. Uh, the nature of this lab, there is some uh, variability in the status and connection from the edge to the orchestrator. So there is these small blips where we will see in it, uh, the edge go to a degraded state. I'm just going to go ahead and click refresh. You now see that it, data center one VCE is now connected and we're expecting that same, uh, same status to come up here shortly for the Chicago VCE. While we're waiting, uh, this is where we're going to kind of, I've mentioned that there's a little bit of a hiccup in the lab uh, and we don't have it documented in the manual, but let's go through this next step together while we're waiting for this edge to come up uh, connected. If you can, uh, open up a new web browser page in Firefox. And what we're going to do is we're going to click uh, the vCenter uh, bookmark link and we're going to log into the vCenter to administer that Chicago VCE edge. Uh, the ad administrator at vCenter.local credentials should already be uh, populated, uh, but if not, it's admin administrator at vSphere.local. Uh, the password is capital V, capital M, lowercase w a r e, number one, exclamation point. So I'll go ahead and click log in. And if you remember those uh, uh, slides I showed about the lab architecture, this is the vSphere client that we were we had those snapshots or those screen captures in. So I'll scroll up to the top and I'll see my Chicago uh, environment is deployed here. I'll click on the Chicago VCE01. And I'm going to click on Actions, which is in the top middle of the page. And then I'm going to click on Edit Settings. So we have the issue where during deployment of the Chicago Edge, uh, the second network adapter is not in a connected state at boot. Um, we have updated the scripts that we use for startup to um, fix this, but it hasn't been pushed to uh, the uh, VMware Learning Platform instances you're deployed or you're using today inside this lab. So we're going to manually have to connect that network adapter. And once it's, you just check that box next to connect it, we just click OK. It'll make that change for us. And that's it. So we'll go back to the orchestrator. Um, web page, uh, so that's a, you know the far left tab over here. Um, but before I continue on, anyone have any issue? Or, or everyone follow along with uh, the vSphere? A thumbs up. Okay, everyone got that step. And I see Laszlo and Ron are helping, so helping someone. So we'll just continue on here while they're working on that, and I'll try and take it slow. So we'll refresh. We still see, oh actually that's the SFO. We see now that Chicago VCE is connected and we are seeing a stable uh, link, WAN link on that edge. So again, to verify the status, uh, 
I'll click refresh down here in the bottom of the uh, edges, or you know, we're in monitor edges. Uh, in this edge monitoring UI, I just click refresh a couple times. Uh, I see it, it is still connected, has a stable link, and now we're gonna click on Chicago VCE01. And what we expect to see here is an active WAN link. Now, uh, in the lab, um, again, we just connected that second interface. Uh, we're gonna configure that second interface here shortly, but I wanted to show you, we now have a stable connection to this, uh, this uh, edge device at the branch. Uh, one thing to note here, we are not seeing any throughput or traffic. It does take a while for the edge to sync, but once it does, you should start seeing throughput and bandwidth information for the edge uh, WAN interface. All right, now we're gonna configure the uh, local area network side of the edge device. So again, connecting up uh, VLAN 1 to Chicago Client 01, and we're gonna create and configure VLAN 2 for Chicago Client 02. Uh, to connect to this edge device. So the first step, uh, we're gonna go to configure. Click on configure in the top left corner. Uh, then we'll click on edges. And then we will click the Chicago VCE01 uh, edge that we just deployed. A Couple things to call out here. We do see a connected state. Uh, we do see SD-WAN services enabled. Uh, we're gonna click on overview and we're gonna see that our edge is now activated. Um, so previously we saw that it was never activated, uh, but we had the, uh, you know, the ability to do so with that send, uh, uh, send email. So we'll go back to device, uh, the device tab for the Chicago client, and we're going to go drop down under connectivity, the VLAN interface. We'll click on VLAN 1, which is one corporate. and we're going to scroll down to the IPv4 settings. So right now, uh, there's no interface for VLAN 1 to use or no IP address, so we're gonna sign that right now. It's 10.24.1.1, and it should auto-populate. We'll leave the CIDR prefix alone at slash 24, and then we will click Done. So now we should see uh, here that VLAN 1 now has a network ID of 10.24.1.0 slash 24, and the IP address of the gateway for the edge is 10.24.1.1. Something to note here, we do see that interfaces GE1 and GE2 are assigned to that same VLAN, so we need to change that configuration to add our VLAN 2. So we're gonna go ahead and add that secondary VLAN for Chicago Client 02. We're gonna select our global segment. Let me click here. Where the, all of these settings will be defined inside uh, page 78 of the lab guide. Uh, I'm gonna be original and call this secondary VLAN secondary, and we're gonna assign it VLAN ID number two. Then I'll scroll down, and again, like we just did for VLAN one, we're gonna define the IPv4 settings, which is 10.24, oops, come on, let's go back here, 10.24.2.1, uh, CIDR prefix slash 24, Network ID should be automatically populated with 10.24.2.0. So we'll click Done. So now we see our second VLAN, 10.24.2.0 slash 24 is our network ID. 10.24.2.1 is the uh, IP address of the gateway interface. Now we're gonna scroll down here a little bit further and I'm gonna select the interfaces drop down menu so right under, still under connectivity and just under the VLAN, we now have interfaces. We're gonna scroll down here, open that drop down menu, and we'll see here GE2. I'm gonna click on GE2. And we're gonna select override. So we're gonna override this interface and we're gonna change the VLAN from corporate to secondary. So you should click for GE2 override and then change the VLAN from VLAN 1 to VLAN 2, which is our secondary VLAN, and click Save. So now I see here I have GE2 with the secondary VLAN now defined to it. And if I go up here back to my VLAN interfaces, I now see GE1 is assigned to corporate VLAN 1, GE2 is assigned to VLAN 2, which is our secondary VLAN. All right, and we'll save changes. 
and it's going to take a disruption to the edge, but we are going to accept that disruption and confirm the change, so it should push that configuration to uh, the Chicago uh, edge we just deployed. So now we're going to continue on with some verification steps. Excuse me. Uh, we'll open up the Romina app. Uh, it should still have a desktop session to the Chicago client open. If not, uh, you can minimize the Firefox browser and click on the shortcut link uh, on the desktop for Chicago Client 01. I'll open up command prompt, and I'm going to ping 10.24.1.1. So I'm going to ping the gateway of Chicago Client 01. So this is on the, the interface that we defined for uh, GE1 on the edge. All right, thank you to the demo gods, <laughs> it worked. Um, all right, so next, uh, we're gonna, next command we're going to run is netstat-rn to view our available routes. So, scrolling up here just a little bit, a couple things we want to call out. So, along with the command that we just ran, netstat-rn, we should see our default gateway for all routes to be 10.24.1.1, and you'll see that we have a path to 10.24.1.0 via our uh, directly connected interface 10.24.1.11. Uh, the next command we're going to run is IP config space slash all. Uh, and this will provide us the IP uh, address of this virtual machine that we're connected to. So uh, we'll see up here, this is 10.24.1.11. That is the IP address of this virtual machine. And our default gateway is 10.24.1.1. I just want to show you the configuration of the workload that we're working with or the virtual machine we're working on. All right, that's the conclusion. We've finished module two. We'll go ahead and move on to module three. Uh, can I get a show of hands? Is everyone uh, at this point caught up? Nope, still catching up? All right, I'll, I'll kind of slow it down a bit. Um, this next lab is our overlay um, configuration lab. We'll show you the difference between auto uh, defined and user defined uh, overlay configurations and what that means for the uh, wide area networks that we connect into. To provide a little bit more context, you can go to step, or I should say, uh, page 93 of the guide. Uh, page 93 actually goes over the terminology of what a public overlay or auto-defined overlay and how it compares to a user-defined overlay and how we, um, you know, consider a private overlay down here. All right, how are we doing? Everyone uh, kind of almost to the overlay? Thumbs up? Okay. All right, we're good. Okay, so now we're going to configure the uh, overlay configurations for auto-defined, so those public links. So a couple of steps here. Um, again, we're going to stay logged in. I'm going to minimize this Romina remote desktop session to Chicago Client 01. And we should come back to the orchestrator web page uh, that's on the Firefox browser of the Linux main console. So we'll skip ahead here to page 98, um, where again, we're going to click configure. We're going to click edges. So configure in the main orchestrator console on the top left. We're gonna, from the drop-down menu on the left-hand side, we'll click Edges, and then we will click Chicago VCE01. All right, how's everyone doing? Are we all are we all on this step together? Yep, yep, yep. Still catching up. Okay. So again, we're gonna scroll down here on the left-hand side, or I should say in the center of the screen, and uh, drop down the interfaces selection page. And I will scroll down here to until we see interface GE4. And this is the interface we're going to configure. Uh, if anyone is not caught up at this point and needs any help, uh, please, please raise your hand and we'll come over and give you a hand here. But uh, to continue on, we'll click on GE4. Our next step here is to override. So I'm going to click override uh, this interface configuration. And then I'm going to scroll down to IPv4 settings. So right now it is set to DHCP. We're going to change that address type to static 
and this will allow us to manually configure the interface, uh, the wide area network interface for GE4 on these, uh, this virtual edge appliance. So the IP address is going to be 198.18.15.11. Our CIDR prefix is going to be 24, and our gateway is going to be 198.18.15.1. So this is the internet router that we are going to peer with, uh, with our Edge device uh, in the Chicago branch. So after I complete entering the IPv4 information, uh, I'm going to click Save. And we're going to then click Save Changes. And again, this is going to temporarily disrupt the function of the edge or performance of the edge, um, but we're going to accept that uh, disruption and push this change to the edge. All right. So we should be able to see that now we have an uh, GE4 set with an auto detect, and we now see that we have a IP address assigned to it, 198.18.15.11, with a gateway of 15.1. Uh, scrolling down just a little bit further on the page, we're going to take a look at the wide area overlay settings. Right now we only see a single interface inside this um, wider WAN overlay uh, setting. And the reason for that is that we just configured that second interface. So it's going to take a little bit of uh, time for the edge to register that secondary interface and then present it back to the orchestrator. So while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and click refresh on the web page. It should take a little bit of time. So. It might take a refresh or two, but uh, once I refresh, I will drop down interfaces one more time, scroll down to that wide area interface, overlay settings, and again, it gets going to take a little bit of time, so uh, now's a good time for us to maybe stop and uh, answer any questions you may have or uh, help anyone who's facing any issues. Everyone doing good? Okay. I'll refresh the page one more time. I'm going to drop down interfaces, I'll scroll back down, and let's see if we have a secondary WAN interface. Oh, it's still, still cooking, still pushing, but uh, it'll take a minute or two. Um, we should see both um, auto detect interfaces, and we would see again here. 198.18.15.11, and it would be IPv4, obviously, and we should see the interface tied to GE4. So we'll just give it another second here. Uh, one thing to call out, we are seeing that the Chicago client is in a, our Chicago edge is in a degraded state, so it, again, it's kind of going, going through its paces. Um, give it another minute or two. Uh, while we're waiting, we can actually check the monitor events. Um, so if I wanted to see uh, the events logs of this, uh, this edge, I'll go ahead and click on monitor in the top left corner. And I'll click events in the left hand menu. And if I wanted to scroll down here, I should be able to find things like edge interface coming up for GE4 and GE3, as well as the edge interface uh, going down. So let's just scroll down here a little bit. Should see. There we are. So I'm, I'm watching the edge. I see the edge interface for GE3 came up. And then I see the edge interface for GE4 came up as well. And now we see the edge in a stable, con a stable um, congestion due to high number of packet drops subsided. OK, so that's actually helping us kind of. It's coming back to life. So let's we'll give it another second. I'll go back to configure. Or actually, let me see what the next step is. I will go back to edges. So we'll stay on monitor. We'll click on edges. And even though the Chicago client is in a degraded state currently, we do show two active links. So now we see GE4 and GE4, GE3 as both being active and stable. So the, the edge, you know, health status, oh, there it is, it fixed itself. We now see it is connected and it is a healthy deployment of an edge device in our wide area network. So I wanted to, I'll click on Chicago client, our Chicago VCE one, sorry, I keep calling it client, but it is, uh, this is actually an edge device. So here we now see in our overview, the link status, and we see both links now available and stable for us to leverage uh, for communication leaving the branch uh, environment. So now we're gonna uh, define our 
update kind of the auto-defined uh, overlays. So first thing I'll do is I'll go to Diagnostics. And to kind of show you what uh, each of these overlays looks like, we're going to click Remote Diagnostics. And I'm going to click on Chicago Client VC, or Chicago Hedge VCE1. While it's coming up, uh, any questions, any issues? Are we all, we're all caught up to here? Yeah, all right. So we're going to scroll down, and I'm going to list the paths available for this Edge device. So scrolling down, we find the list paths um, uh, selection or, or diagnostic ab uh, ability. And we'll click Run for list paths. And what we expect to see is four stable links. So we see here our local IP addresses and the remote IP addresses of the uh, internet routers. And it's exactly as we expect. I'll, drop, I'll scroll down just a little bit more, but we see four stable links. And this is just redundancy across uh, both of the WAN uh, links uh, to this Edge device. So now we're going to go in and update and configure the user-defined overlays. And so these, this is for branches like Dallas, San Francisco, New York City. Um, these steps we'll need here are defined in this next couple bits, or a little bit. So we're going to click on configure. We'll go to edges. And we're going to click on New York City. Under New York City, I'm going to click the drop down of for interfaces underneath connectivity and scroll down. Now I should see GE4 and GE3 defined uh, as auto detect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select GE4. And we're going to change this from an auto detect to a user defined. So scroll down to the IPv4 settings. And under IPv4 settings, you'll see WAN overlay. And where it says auto detect, we're going to change that to user defined. So again, we're updating the WAN uh, interface here on the New York City Edge device. Go ahead and click Save. And then we're going to scroll down to the WAN overlay settings. So we should see here our MPLS interface, which is what we would connect to GE4. And we'll go ahead and click on that MPLS uh, name. And you should be able to scroll down, and we'll now see that we have interface GE4 available for this MPLS uh, connected WAN interface. So I'm going to click the checkbox to select GE4 and update that link. And then we're going to save those changes. There is going to be another disruption warning, but we're going to accept that disruption and move along. So we'll accept. It's going to go through. And now we're going to go back, and while this is updating, I'm going to click on Edges. So we're staying in configure, Configuration, uh, Edges, and now we're going to update the DC1 VCE01. So DC1 VCE01. Uh, we're not going to touch the O2 Edge at this point. Uh, but we're going to go through very similar steps. So under Interfaces, under Connectivity, we're going to drop down Interfaces and scroll down. And we should see here GE4 is set to auto detect. And we're going to do exactly what we did for New York and change it to user defined. So we're going to go ahead and click GE4. I'm going to scroll down to the IPv4 settings. And where it says WAN overlay, drop down and select user defined. I'm going to go ahead and click save. So skipping ahead here. Uh, we're going to move on to updating the MPLS interface on this edge as well. So we see GE3 is defined and assigned to a, a WAN overlay. We're going to click on the MPLS, and just like we did for New York, scroll down. We see GE4 is, is now available as an interface. We're going to select that checkbox and update that link. So this would be step 125 in the lab manual. Uh, Moving on, we're going to save those changes for the DC1 and accept the disruption for this edge for the configuration change we just made. And that concludes module three. Um, take a quick uh, poll. Are we all we're all caught up? Has everyone gotten through module three? All right, all right. Seeing success. Any questions? Um, we have Ron walking around with the mic. Um, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. All right, continue on to module four. 
So now we're going to configure the edge profiles. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a sample edge, our sample segment profile, and then we're going to go ahead and also configure and manage the existing uh, branch profiles as well. Uh, there's a little bit of information on what these profiles are and how you create and assign them, uh, what restrictions you can provide to them on page 133 of the lab manual. So if you have any questions or if you'd like any more information on that, uh, please raise your hand and let us know, but uh, we'll skip ahead here to the profile creation. So the first thing, as I mentioned, we're going to create a segment-based profile. Um, we already have the Firefox web browser open from the previous module, so I'm going to skip ahead. We're still logged into the orchestrator with the admin at Global Retail, so I can skip that step. Now we're going to click on Configure in the top uh, menu across the bar, uh, top bar. And I'm going to click on Profiles under Configure. So on the left-hand side, you see, should see Edge Configuration. We're going to click on Profiles. And I'm going to add a new profile. Page 138 of the lab manual, we are going to call this new profile new segment profile and click create. We can add a custom description if you like, um, but we're going to go ahead and click create. So we've just created a segment profile. Uh, and on the overview tab, you scroll down. Uh, one of the things we want to call out here is the pro in the profile overview, you will see that this profile is available on these selected models of the uh, of the Edge deployment. So you see here Virtual Edge, Edge 2000, Edge 1000. All of these are now, this profile is now available to be applied to these edges um, that are deployed inside your environment. We also can show, I'll go back to profiles here on the left, uh, the ability to duplicate. So let's say we selected like our branch internet only uh, and we wanted to duplicate that, you could click duplicate and it would copy it over and we can say, you can rename it anything you like. I think in this step, uh, you know, we just call it test, but we're going to go ahead and click cancel. But that would copy over the business profiles, business, uh, or sorry, excuse me, edge profile, so that we could then modify it and make a, you know, slight change maybe to like uh, certain types of branch internet only deployments. Maybe we change certain restrictions uh, for that profile. So now user profile restrictions, so we're going to create a new profile here. And we're going to call this branch virtual profile. So this is again showing us that we have the ability to create a new profile um, without having to you know, copy over or duplicate and click create. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to restrict the application of this profile to only our virtual edge deployments. So in the... Um, branch virtual profile that we just created, we're going to click on device in the left hand side. Then we're going to drop down interfaces. And you'll see here your edge models that are allowed to use this profile. We're going to remove all of the edges, all the ed versions of edges that are uh, available. And we're going to apply it just to our virtual edge devices. So everything is removed except for the virtual edge, and I'll go ahead and I'll click Save Changes. And now, going back to Overview real quick, just to show you. Now, for Profile, under Profile Overview Enabled Models, only the virtual edge will receive this profile if we apply it to the uh, virtual edge appliance. If you had other edges that were deployed, uh, you know, you'd have the ability to kind of it wouldn't be able to apply to those because if they're not the virtual edge, they wouldn't receive. They wouldn't have the ability of selecting that profile. I'm going to skip ahead of creating the new edge and applying the new virtual profile. Uh, we end up canceling it out of it anyways, but just to show you, uh, if you were to go to configure, go to edges, and then add a new edge device, it would be very similar to what we did for the Chicago VCE. You're just going to call it test-VCE, and you'll see that if you select it's a virtual edge, you'll be, have the ability to apply the virtual edge, our branch virtual profile directly to that edge. So skipping, a, skipping ahead here, we're going to assign edges to a profile. So you know how when we created the Chicago VCE, I selected that quick start profile. Now we're going to apply the branch internet only profile because Chicago only has internet connected WAN interfaces. So going back to configure, go to edges. I'm going to select the checkbox next to Chicago VCE. We don't want to click the name because if you click the name, it'll take you to the configuration, but check the box and then we'll have the ability to assign a profile. 
And once we click Assign Profile, we are going to select the Branch Internet Only Profile. So click, select that from the drop-down list, and then click Assign. And we should now see, confirming this, the profile that's applied to Chicago, uh, Chicago Edge now shows Branch Internet Only, which is perfect. So that's uh, kind of what we expected, and that's concluding Module 4. Any questions? Uh, show of hands, are we all completed with Module 4? Everyone's got their profile? All right, perfect. We'll move along to Module 5. And uh, just to let everyone know, I, I know it's a little time consuming to have to go through each of these steps to get to the later modules. After Explore this year, we are, or I should say this uh, session, we are hopefully going to start working on a module skipper so you can skip to head to module four, five, and six, and seven uh, later on. Uh, so we'll hopefully have that available soon when we release these labs. So module five, we're going to apply business policies to these edge uh, deployments. And this is the last module we'll be covering in this lab today. And then uh, if you have some time, there's the cloud VPN as well as DPMO module available uh, for you to continue on and test or, or go through the configuration. So again, I'm going to skip ahead. We already have the Firefox web browser open, so skipping to page 161 inside the lab manual. We're already logged into the orchestrator, but if not, this is where you'd log back into the orchestrator. And now we're going to configure those profiles again. So I'm going to click on configure. We're already there. Under edge configuration, I'm going to select profiles. And then I'm going to click on the branch internet only profile. So under branch internet only profile, I'm going to click on business policy. And under business policy rules, I'm going to add a new business policy by clicking the plus add button when it becomes available. Right now it's loading up our business policy rules that are existing. Give it a second here, it's still, uh, still thinking. If you are kind of waiting for this page a little bit and it's taking a little bit to load, let's go ahead and let's click the reload the current page. And it should bring it up. Oh, there we go. All right, so just need a little bit of a, a refresh to the, the web page, and then it came right up. So we'll go ahead and click add. And I'm going to call this one rule dash one dash Yahoo. Uh, leave source and destination uh, their default any any and under application we're going to define the application. Uh, if you highlight this um, any application you can type in the word web and it should drop down and give you the ability to select capital D -E or D W E B web. Excuse me, tongue tied myself. Uh, application, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and delete all web, and I'm going to type yahoo.com. And it should come up as an item we can select. So capital Y-A-H-O-O.com. And now I'm going to click uh, action. So next we click action, which is right next to the match in the middle of the uh, pane. And I'm going to select for network service instead of multipath, we're going to send Yahoo traffic direct to yahoo.com. So instead of using paths through our gateways, which are connected to our edges, uh, we're going to send that directly uh, over the internet links directly to yahoo.com. So I'll go ahead and create that page, correct that uh, rule. And we're going to save changes. And now we can minimize the Firefox browser or we can go down and click the Ramina uh, application in the, in the uh, test bar of the Linux main console. And it should bring up our Chicago, v, Chicago client uh, 01. I'm gonna open up a Chrome browser uh, within the Chicago client 01 and then I'm going to go to yahoo.com. Now it may take a few minutes for this policy to push to the edge and then apply. So I may refresh uh, yahoo.com uh, a couple of times just to make sure the policy is being applied. And I think, <laughs> I think the demo is not going as expected. I, I'm not hitting yahoo.com right now. Let's see here. Let me test a couple of things here. Let's make sure we can ping 
our gateway. Yep. Let's try this again. Yahoo.com. And then enter. Give it a minute. And let's see. Come on. Alright, well, while it's loading the page, uh, any questions? Uh, yes, uh, one second, let me bring the mic over. Um, my question is, we just opened the, the gateway to go directly to yahoo.com? Uh, for the edge. The for edge, the edge? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. The, the clients that are behind the edge will go direct to yahoo.com instead okay. of multipathing through the gateways. So. Good question. Thank you. Hey, Frank, uh, I think we are having a bit of a bug. We hit a bit of a bug here. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, give me a second one while I go check to make sure our edges are up. So just to check the health of our edges, I'm going to click monitor. And we'll click on edges. Let's check Chicago. All right, we're showing connected. Uh, one second, everyone. So we just uh, we realized what the, the issue might be. So that secondary connected WAN link that I enabled on the edge, uh, that gig, our network adapter 2 on the edge, we may have to disable it to get the traffic to flow over the, dead, the intended link, link 1. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to the Firefox browser. If you don't have it open already, please open up a new tab and click on the vCenter link. Uh, in the bookmark, I should say, uh, in the uh, taskbar, or bookmark uh, bar. Uh, we're going to go back to the Chicago VCE01. Uh, so if you haven't already, uh, if you don't still have it open, make sure you click on Chicago VCE01 once you log into the vSphere client. We're going to click Actions, and we're going to Edit Settings. And Network Adapter 2 is going to have to be disconnected temporarily for right now. Uh, again, we'll get this resolved uh, you know, before we release these labs to the public, but uh, for right now it's going to be a little bit of troubleshooting uh, for us to kind of go through together here in this lab. So go ahead and click OK. And um, just to kind of fill in some context here, um, this is actually just an issue within the hands-on lab, <clears throat> an issue with the hands-on lab itself. Um, the way we have everything set up in order to uh, kind of fool some of the uh, uh, gateway firewall cap um, rule sets. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on which uh, HOL cloud it pops into. So some of you it might have worked, some of you it might not have. This is the workaround just to get everyone working. Um, in production, it won't be this way. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. All right, so we'll go back to the orchestrator, and I'm going to... Sure, I'm on. Okay, yeah. Uh, make sure we still see Chicago is connected. I'm going to open up the Romina one more time. So we're going to open up that application. And I'm going to try yahoo.com one more time. Let's see if we can get this to work. It's expected. And click reload this page. Give it a minute. It is going to take a little while for that edge to disconnect uh, the secondary network adapter and update its uh, configuration, um, or I should say reflect that change inside the configuration of the orchestrator. But uh, hopefully we can access Yahoo here again shortly. We'll have to resolve this a little bit later. But uh, so going back to Firefox um, on the Linux main console, I'm going to go back to our orchestrator. Um, we're going to click on Diagnostics, so in that top menu bar, and Remote Diagnostics on the left, and then I would click on Chicago VCE01. So what we would expect to see is we're going to go back down, scroll down and find List Active Flows. What we would expect to see here is if, if you did run a List Active Flows, we would see Yahoo, and we would see the route as listed as direct to cloud and the business policy that's assigned to that flow would be the rule one Yahoo. So that's uh, kind of what we expect to see. Obviously, with the current uh, lab instance that I have, I think we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to see that, but uh, 
and we'll troubleshoot this uh, at, at a later date. All right, continuing on, we're going to configure and identify cloud traffic. So going back to configure, uh, we're going to create another business policy. I'm going to click on prof, uh, profiles and click on the branch internet only profile one more time. Now click on business policy in the drop down, and we're going to add a new business policy again. This time I'm going to call this rule 2 youtube.com, or we can just leave it as YouTube. Uh, leave source and destination the same, application we're going to define. Application category, this is going to be considered media. And under application, I'm going to type out youtube.com. And then we should be able to select it there. Next, I'm going to click on actions. Under actions, instead of it network service listed as direct, we're going to select multi-path. And then I'm going to click create. So that's the only change we're going to make is to the network service. And you should see it listed now as multi-path. So I'll go ahead and click save changes. Verify that rule two dash I'm sorry, rule two dash YouTube is listed at the top of the list. For YouTube.com, network service is defined as multi-path. All right. So validation. This step would assume that again we have a functioning uh, <laughs> uh, lab uh, for this, but we would be able to go to back to Romina, back to the Romina application, back to the Chicago Client 01 desktop and I'd be able to go to youtube.com, hit enter. Unfortunately, I'm unable to access youtube.com, but we'll continue on. We're gonna go back to the Firefox browser. I'm gonna go click on, and again, the Firefox browser that's inside the Linux main console, back to the orchestrator uh, webpage, and I'm going to click on diagnostics. Click on remote diagnostics, and we'll be able to click on Chicago Client VCE01, or Chicago Edge VCE01. And again, going down to list active flows, we would click run, uh, scroll down a bit, and we sh what we would want to see is YouTube going cloud via, or accessing it, the web page via cloud via the gateway, and we would see the business policy is being applied to that flow, rule-2-YouTube. Dash dash Any questions? Um, obviously, I apologize for the, the issues with the functionality of our lab, but uh, if there are any issues, uh, please let us know if you're facing that the similar issue to what I'm seeing inside my lab. And that is the conclusion of module five. Um, that does conclude our uh, lab for today. Let me just go back to our PowerPoint. Um, I also, we did want to mention as our team, we have other labs available uh, within our group. Um, we have NSX Fundamentals, which is a very heavily focused on our networking security functionality uh, of our NSX product line, as well as ARIA Operations for Network Visibility, previously referred to as vRealize Network Insight. Uh, we have our labs here, 2440.01 and 2440.02. Again, our SD-WAN focused managed partner services lab is 02 and what the lab we just completed uh, was 2440.01 getting started with SD-WAN. Uh, Frank has built an awesome lab for our cloud web security, 2440.01. If you have a chance, please take that lab. It's, it's really cool showing you how to manage uh, remote desktop clients from a cloud perspective. We also have our advanced load balancer labs here as well. Um, you know, getting started with ALB, uh, talk, and this is previously the Avi uh, platform, as well as GSLB, WAF, and container-based migrations. Uh, we wanted to also mention, if you could please take your survey, it really helps our team. Um, you know, obviously it gives us a lot of feedback for the lab. I apologize for the uh, issue that we faced today with the uh, instance that I had. Um, I hope being none of yours, it sounds like some of you were able to complete the lab, which is great. And we wanted to thank you all. Uh, thank you for coming out today. Thank you for attending Explore. Um, we hope you have a great rest of the show. Have a nice day.